Hello, everyone. I've unmuted everybody, and I'm recording for those who can't be here. Good to see you guys. All right, I see some faces, and at least your names. All right. Hey, there's Steven. Is that Carver back there? Yeah. Cool. And hey, Deegan, you got to check your class graph messages. You haven't checked in a while, and you missed a big one. A big one. Cool. What's yeah. that? Ooh, haircut. Yeah, need a haircut. But I'm not going to get one. I haven't gotten a haircut in three months, and my head is still like this. <laughs> wow. Yeah, my hair is getting long. Or even longer. I don't know. Mom did it for me. My wife wants the buzz cut. Give me just a quarter inch haircut. I used to have it that short, but I don't know if I want to go that short again. Oh, yeah, your hair is good. Sarah. I got an undercut and a like five inches off my head. Wow, yeah. That video, Mr. Gonzalez has the long beard with <laughs> I like that. <laughs> my beard hasn't <laughs> quite gotten that long. You're like, we've been I've been in quarantine too long and then <laughs> said I need to shave. You're not the only one that's been in quarantine too long. Yes. Yeah, no, I don't like it when my beard gets long. I have to trim it. I can trim my beard. I'm not cutting my own hair. I used to do that. It was not fun. I still cut my own hair. Nigel's upside down. Indeed. I frag it. Looks like there's a setting for rotation on the same place you find the virtual background. I know. Cool. I don't have a green screen, so I can't do backgrounds. I do it without a green screen. Well, this one doesn't... <laughs> I don't have a green screen, and this one doesn't have the requirements for, for doing a virtual background with a green screen, but... That's why I don't mention it. at anyone else's house. At least you can flip it. Hey, Tanner. <laughs> looks like Tanner's brother. That's Cooper, not Tanner. Cooper. <laughs> oh yeah, Sarah gets rid of your face. <laughs> it's yeah. Update that fast. So I have to stay with none. Yeah, that works better. Wow. Okay. Me, bro. I'm dancing without moving. The yeah, reason why I haven't mentioned Classcraft lately is because I had to do an update. Or in my update, I couldn't do without my um, parents' Apple ID. Oh. So, and now, for some reason, it's now letting me. Oh, good. Because, yeah, you got to check your class craft messages every day. You don't want to miss something important. And the random event, still going on. There have been some good ones. Sarah, you got the lottery again. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Twice in one year. We've never had that. That was wild. So now you're level 15, so you and Ethan are tied for level 15. And I can't buy any of the sets. Oh, yeah. You got to do um, some extra stuff for gold. Okay. I just turned on Classcraft, and it says you've reached level 11. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, people weird, are leveling up. I want to see if you gained two hundred and twenty-five oh, GP. Whoa! We'll see if anyone makes level eighteen this year. We still have. So, can you believe it? By next week, we'll have four weeks left of school. Four. No, I'm one glad, month. Though. Yes, I'm oh. done with school. And that'll mean that we will have been 
in quarantine doing homeschool learning for three months by the end of the year. Three really? months. Yeah, because we've mm -hmm. already done two months. I just want to go back to school. But this quarantine is making it way too long. Void bender? Yeah. Nope. Conjurer. All right. Well, I'm going to start because we've got 26 of us here. So that's 25 of you, one of me. Uh, nice to see you all and welcome to another week of science. All right. So I'm going to mute. And as always, if you have something to say, uh, just raise your hand and then be patient because I don't always get to, I don't check the chat and the raise hands very often, but I will try to check in. All right. And um, a reminder, if you're going to respond to people in the chat room, uh, respond to what people ask, and especially if it helps people with what we're learning or talking about, or if I have an announcement or something. Don't just mess around in the chat, because I save those and I want to see if people have a question I didn't answer. Um, and it really helps if it's what we're talking about and not just goofy stuff. And yes, we're going to do another Pear Deck. So as always, if you're seeing this full screen, go to your settings at the top and um, uh, choose exit full screen. And then I will share my screen to start the Pear Deck. Ooh, actually, let me redo that. Boom. Yeah, let me share it this way, just in case. All right, so today's Pear Deck code is red olives drive young kangaroos, R-O-D-Y-K. And uh, every now and then I'll say, come back and look at the Zoom so you can see what I'm sharing. But if, if you're on the Pear Deck, you'll see what I'm sharing. And if for some reason you can't have both things going on, if you're on the Zoom, you'll see everything everybody else sees. So that'll be excellent. And I'm going to put the code in the chat just in case somebody comes in late. And then if somebody comes in late, I'll admit them into the room. And then if somebody could share the code with them or let them know we're on Pear Deck, that will be great. See, this is how we help each other. R-O-D-Y-K. Thank you, Sarah. All right, so we've got 26 students in the Zoom and 15 on Pear Deck. Let's see who knows what Monday was. Because, uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. 40 years ago. 40 years. Something happened. And if you don't know what, it was in Washington State. Oh, yeah. Were uh, any of you around when it happened? Just kidding. None of you are over 40. I was living in... Uh, Miami, Florida at the time. So I don't think I knew about it. At least if it was on the news. You know, I was a kid. I wasn't watching the news. I always hated the news. So depressing. Um, especially now. Oh, a lot of crazy stuff. Um, so I didn't know about it. That's what happens if you don't watch the news. You miss the cool stuff because of all the depressing stuff. All right, we still only have 18 people in. I don't know what's, uh, maybe some of you are still signing in. 19, all right, we're getting there. So if you're not signed in yet, the code is on the uh, chat. And it'll show the code, but just make sure you get on Pear Deck so you can follow along. And let's see 
what people are writing. Oh, look at that. Most of you know. You guys are so good. You know this stuff. So most of you are responding and I'm going to lock your uh, screens in three and two and one. And look there, a lot of people knew or remembered or both. They knew and remembered or they were watching the news. A few of you didn't know, but yeah, May 18, which just happened Monday, was the anniversary of Mount St. Helens, the big eruption that happened during our kind of lifetime or our generations, my generation for sure. So it was May 18, 1980 that that big uh, blast happened that we're still visiting till this day and seeing the effects of. Um, but that's pretty cool. So I've got a nice, article there for you uh, that you can read later. I just wanted you to have it. But if you just search Mount St. Helens, Helen's 40th anniversary, um, you'll find a lot of amazing stories about it. Really cool. And the thing is, scientists at the time when it erupted and destroyed everything, they did not expect for uh, things to start growing back and coming to life this fast. Uh, it recovered, the area that was destroyed recovered very quickly. So that is pretty amazing. And um, Miss Berg shared with me this amazing story that came out. So I didn't know this, uh, but this person who was at none other that camp at Camp Sispis in 1980 in May, uh, these were elementary students. He was six years old, right? So at six years old, he's at Camp Sispis with his classmates camping, just like we did months ago in September. And the volcano erupted. So if you read the story, it's really amazing. As a kid, a six-year-old, he, he wrote about it, and he's writing as an adult what it was like when he was six. Uh, so he's piecing together what he can remember and what he read from the stories he wrote as a six-year-old. And um, so the volcano erupted and, and the adults were like, what do we do? Do we stay here at camp? And at first they were going to, they were going to stay at camp. But imagine that huge ash cloud started rushing towards them. And guess what? They panicked and they're like, well, maybe we should leave. So they took up the kids, put them in a car, started driving out of Sispis. Now you remember, I don't know if you remember, you probably do, when we drove out of Camp Sispis, we're going through that windy uh, uh, road in the middle of the forest. Now imagine doing that drive completely covered in ash where the person driving can only see a few feet ahead of them going really slow at about five miles per hour. It's the same thing that happened to the guy who's taking the pictures and caught the eruption in action. And then he jumped into his truck and said, I better get out of here before I die. And they survived. They survived. They got to a, a church. The church people let them in and they waited because, you know, you don't want to breathe that stuff in. So it's a really great story. You got the link to it there. I, I recommend you read it. But how cool is that, right? really exciting stuff. So I, I, Ms. Berg found it and I was like, really awesome. Thank you for sharing that. So I told her I'm going to share it with uh, the sixth graders during my Zoom. Yeah, in 1980. So this guy was six, making it about 46 now. And um, he wrote about it. Really cool. Uh, so you have that link there. And when we're done with this Zoom, I will put the pair deck on a uh, student mode or student paste. So you can go back if you missed any of the links and you want to see this stuff again, because it's great stuff I got for you today. All right, before we um, get on with today's stuff, I wanted to have you do some quick sharing in small groups. I don't know how many of you have done this in um, Zoom, but I can make breakout rooms, they're called breakout rooms, where you're going to be 
uh, in small groups of about four or five. And I just want you to take turns, go around, and, and hopefully it's people you haven't talked to in a while, and just say, what's going well for you? What is going well? It could be something personal in your life. Maybe you're playing a new game that you're really enjoying. Maybe it's you're, you're starting to catch up on your schoolwork and you're feeling good about that because with one month left, you want to get some passing scores, you know, threes and fours. You don't want to get ones and twos and incompletes because ah, nobody wants that. So you're going to be put in a room. It's going to do it automatically. So I don't even know who's going to be with whom. And I'm only going to give you like two to three minutes just to take turns, talk, share, catch up really quick. What is going well? All right. Two people just joined. If you just joined, I'm putting everyone into a small group breakout room to share what's going well. I want to focus on some positives here. All right, here we go. I'm gonna open the rooms and you're gonna see a, a join. So make sure you go to Zoom right now, click on join and join each other. And if you're still here, get on Zoom. So Lillian, get on Zoom. Click on the uh, join button and share what's going well. So I still see, yeah, there we go. All right, Addison and Camden, you are the last two. So if you could join your room, go on in there and share. Ah, Camden left. There, everybody's in. Mm. And Mr. Gonzalez. Uh, Hello, Keegan. All right, who's going first? Um, I, I will. All right, what's going well? Mm. I guess it's just nothing really. The weather's not too good. Um, not, right now I got my cat on me. Hey, nice. I got my cat to love me. She's always, oh, always good. But, um, Addison, my new baby sister, she's five months old. She's doing good. That's good to hear. Oh, yeah. Um, I really appreciate the school giving that lunch. And, uh, we got a great lunch, actually. It wasn't a, a nasty school lunch like usual. They Excellent. Went. So, yeah. All right, Wyatt, what's going on with you? What about Tanner? Are you well, I got to agree with you, Keegan, about the weather. I'm looking forward to uh, a return of some sun. Yeah. I don't like, I, you know, I kind of don't mind running in the rain, though. But I do enjoy sunny days. It's so nice to be out there. And yeah, I go down my road, West Valley Road. I don't run into people, so I don't have to wear a mask, uh, which is really nice because I hate running and breathing into a mask. It's, uh, yeah. you get a lot of spit in your face. I live in a trailer park, so I see a lot of people. It's hard to get out. Yeah. 
yeah, that's a bummer. So hopefully, I mean, you hear talk on the news of a vaccine. Hope they get one soon so things can uh, really get back to some kind of normal. But yeah, we'll see what the fall is going to look like and what going back to school is going to be like. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to exit for a moment and I'm going to end this quick small group check-in shortly. So I'll see you guys in a few seconds. All righty then. All right. Hello. Don't know if you got to do your breakout room, but I'm bringing everybody back. So everyone will be coming back in soon. Here they come. All right. People are coming back to the main room. I like those breakout rooms. They're pretty cool. So we got 19 people, 21, 22. All right. Okay, so it looks like almost everyone is back. Welcome back. I hope you uh, had a good time getting to see some of your classmates again, <laughs> see virtually. Uh, and I hope you shared some cool stuff. I know I, I checked in on one group and we were commenting about the weather, but it's going to get better. Um, and yeah, also talking about whether you can get out or not. If there's a lot of people where you live, you might have to wear a mask. Uh, I'm lucky. I can go out for a run for miles and not run into anybody, literally. So yeah, I'm going to share my screen again, and um, we're going to go back to the Pear Deck. If you just tuned in, we uh, started a Pear Deck. So for those of you who just came in or came in late, you want to exit full screen, open up a new tab, go to joinpd.com, and the code is R-O-D-Y-K. I'm going to put it in the chat room once again. Air deck code R O D Y K. Boom. There, just in case you missed it. All right, moving right along. I've got some announcements. There's been a lot of stuff coming in, and I just want to make sure you know it all because knowledge is power and knowing is good. Um, did you know Monday's Memorial Day? Which means. Technically, there's no school. Now, I, I find myself saying that sounding kind of weird because this doesn't really feel like school, right? Uh, but here's the thing. That Monday, if you do work, because I know some of you are turning stuff in on the weekend, and I'm like, you know what? You turn it in. I will check it. I'm a little slower on the weekends and on uh, non-school days because Monday, I'm going to sleep in because, uh, yeah, it's like some of you. I can't get to sleep early. I, I get to sleep every night around one. Last night, I didn't get to bed till two. It was hard to go to sleep. Yeah, this whole quarantine, not seeing you guys and having to do distance learning is messing with my sleep cycle. And I know some of you too. I see some of you in the morning for esports, and you look about as dead as I feel <laughs> or as dead as I look some days. Um, so yeah, Memorial Day, Monday, sleep in take the day off, uh, try to do something fun that's safe because it's a holiday. And I put a link there to the history of Memorial Day in case you don't know, because I love history. History is cool. It's good to know why we do the things we do. And speaking of history, you guys are living through one of the biggest things that's happened in a hundred years. You know this is going to be history and kids are going to be studying this uh, when you're old and you're going to be like, yep, I was in sixth grade during that time, and I remember 
it was weird. Uh, so let's see, I think I got a couple of hands up. Let me check that. Okay, we got Cody. Cody, you're, let me unmute you or not. Oh, uh, there. You were saying that the, the private chat room things are cool. Um, and, I, and as soon as you said that, I was like, so are you. Oh, really? Why, well, thank you. All right. And let's see who's next. Avery, you're on. So the um, this weekend from Memorial Weekend, I'm doing, like, every year from Memorial Weekend, my family, like, goes up to my grandma's, and she has this big quad riding track. All of us bring our, like, motor homes and stuff and our trailers and go ride quads, like, Friday to Monday. Whoa, that and, sounds like fun. Yeah. Yeah, I see you riding around, so that's kind of cool. And I'm totally not going to bring friends. Totally not going to be friends. Sure. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, Anya, let me unmute you. You're on. I don't really like living in the sister. <laughs> no fun. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. So, Monday, have some fun if you can. Uh, also, you've probably seen this. I've got a um, question there on Pear Deck just to see, check in with you how many of you know. Uh, Mrs. Moriarty has already started making plans for how to get books back. Oops, sorry. How to get books back. And so check it out. All right. Next week is the last week of May. And then we start June, and we got three weeks of school left in June. And as you can see there, for grades three through six, your time to have your you and your parents come to school and turn in textbooks and library books are the last two weeks of June. Remember, we're going till June 19th. So June 12th was going to be the last day of school, but it isn't anymore. So don't be finished then. You got four weeks and two days left to catch up on any work you're behind on. So we've got five, six, seven, eight, nine. A few of you have responded. And let's see, we've got five people saw this on the Science Google Classroom. Two people are gonna check for it and two of you saw it somewhere else. So yeah, if you didn't know about this, make sure you let your parents know because you don't wanna be stuck with those books over the summer, um, just in case. Now the next thing I heard from Mr. Haddenham, many of you might be interested in, is next year, you're gonna be in junior high. Uh, and a, a high school thing, whether it's junior high or senior high, is ASB which stands for Associated Student Body. And it's a lot like the Eagle Leader Program, only you get to be an officer for your grade level. So in seventh grade, you guys are gonna elect a president, a vice president, a secretary, and a treasurer. You can run for any of those um, offices if you are interested in, in leading uh, your, your grade level. You got to fill out an application. It's a lot like Eagle Leader. So if you've done Eagle Leader, you know how to do it. Um, and I put a link to the application there at the uh, bottom of the slide if you check it later. But this is really cool because you get to do a speech in front of the whole, I think they'll just do it in front of the seventh grade, so in front of your peers, not the whole school. Uh, but we used to do it for middle school when we had six, seven, eight sixth, seventh, and eighth graders went for it, and they had to do their speeches in front of the whole school. And maybe you guys will do seven, eight, or just seven, I don't know, but Mr. Haddenham will have those questions. So, oops, let me check your responses. Let's see how many people we got interested. Oh, we look at that. We got a lot of interest. Uh, it's nice, because if you have two people going for all the offices, you can have speeches, and then 
your classmates will vote and um, you'll have your, your ASB for, for next year. So that's really cool. If you don't mind, I will pass your names on to Mr. Haddenham and you can message me on Classcraft if you're like, no, I changed my mind, don't tell Mr. Haddenham um, because he will probably want to check back with you and make sure you get the application in because it'd be nice to have an election. And you guys can feel the power of democracy in action when you get to vote for your president, VP, secretary, and treasurer. Uh, really cool stuff. And you can email Mr. Haddenham with your school email to ask him questions about, well, what does a treasurer do? We really handle money. Yeah, you keep track of money for your grade level. Um, and the secretary who takes notes and does all, keeps track of all the minutes. That's what they call the notes when you meet. They call them minutes. I don't know why, it's kind of weird. Uh, but yeah, so thank you for those of you who are interested in running. And um, we gotta get the word out to every sixth grader so we can have a really awesome election. So the next slide, how many of you saw this? Pretty cool. The newsletter just came out and some of you made uh, uh, one of the pages. So yeah, technology, distance learning. Uh, our class got on there. <laughs> I thought that was cool. Um, and they wrote about how Chimicum got ready for this and what we did and how, how kids are getting to still meet with their teachers. And there's this great video a bunch of great videos on the Chimicum School website. Check them out, they are really awesome. And one of the videos has a bunch of stuff that we did earlier this year. So you might see some stuff that sixth graders do. Might even be some of your pictures, I don't remember. But this is cool. So I'm gonna lock and let's see where we're at. Ah, look at that. So 11 of you didn't know they wrote about us. Two of you saw that. So yeah, uh, there's a link to the newsletter on the Chimicum Schools website. So you can see the art, read the article and have a picture of yourself if you made that, that cover. Nice, I thought it was cool. Next question, um, I wanna check in. I've had some uh, of your parents tell me that some of you, I don't know if it's any of you here or if it's those who aren't here, and that's why they're struggling, are confused. You're like, I don't know what to do. Uh, what videos are you talking about? Um, what assignment do I do next? Do we need an FAQ, a frequently asked questions? Because I think Mr. Brennan's doing this. Is he doing this? Give me a thumbs up if Mr. Brennan has a frequently asked questions. No? Well, here's how it works. I make a Google document, share it with everyone. You have a question, you go in, you type your question. Somebody else checks it, they know the answer, they can answer it. You don't have to wait for me. It's like when we're in class, ask three before me. But if I see your question first, I'll put an answer there, right? Next person has a question, they come there, what if the question's already answered? They can read the answer and they don't even have to wait for me. It's really quite brilliant. Um, so if you need it, I will do it. And let's see what the answers are. Let me check in. So we got ah, four people need it and six people are like, I don't need it, but I can check in and answer questions. You know what, that's 10 people. I'll do it today after this Zoom is over. Uh, four of you are like, nah, I'm good and I don't have time to check it. And the two of you that said, what is that? Uh, I hope I answered that for you because it's gonna look exactly like that. You type in, you all have the privilege to type in. Just be cool. Don't mess with what other people type. Don't change my fonts or anything. You know, you get to practice being school appropriate, just like in the chat room here. Don't be silly and type silly stuff. Uh, ask real questions. And when you answer, give people an actual answer. You might put a link to, oh yeah, Mr. G has a video. Here it is, right here. Give them the link so they can click. This could be very helpful. And I love it when you guys help each other because the more of us doing this and helping each other, the more we can get through this. And that's what we need to do. We're all here to help each other, just like in the classroom. 
Um, and in terms of making it visible, people will just have to well, change it as possible. All right. Uh, so I think some of you saw this. What do you think of my virtual classroom? Did you like this one? I like that class. I want to go there. Um, so I had fun with my Bitmoji and making this, but this is interactive, okay? You can go on there and click around. Some of the links are obvious, like the Act Now and the uh, EV3. I hope you, you knew those were there, but if you click around, you might find other stuff that is totally um, hidden. Welcome to my virtual classroom. Now that we're learning virtually at a distance in our own homes. Uh, so what we have here, it, I know, I love that. Uh, so I had two links that I wanna go over with you today. Uh, by the way, if you didn't see that in Google Classroom, check it out. I'm really happy that I made that. Ooh, we got a raised hand. Let me go into participants. Riley, you're unmuted. Is that your Bitmoji for Snapchat? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and I, I went on Snapchat and made him dance, which I never knew how to do that, but I learned how and I, I really enjoyed it. If you saw my, my second virtual classroom, you will have seen my dancing Bitmoji. So cool. Uh, but here are, are two of, now first of all, when you click on the EV3, I don't know if you know this, but those of you who miss it, there's a website where you can code and, and do things with the EV3 on your computer, okay? Uh, which I heard about from Mr. Thaddeus Jerzinski, who teaches Pi, and I'm like, I wanna make sure my sixth graders know about this. But the other one that's really cool is this thing. I wanted to share this. For those of you who are still working on some of your blog posts, this might be a website you want to share with the world. This guy had an idea. He's like, okay, I know planting trees helps get carbon out of the air and keep it in a tree trunk instead of in the atmosphere. And I know they're cutting trees down for all sorts of things. So I wanna start a goal of planting 8 billion trees. And that's what this website is about. Now, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming at you. Buy this, buy this, buy this. Don't. I mean, you don't have to unless your parents can afford it. But don't make your parents stressed out anymore and saying, we have to buy this and support 8 billion trees. No, you don't. The way you can support it without spending a dime is share it on your blog. Okay. As a matter of fact, the sixth grade blog post, I'm sharing it with a whole bunch of teachers that are going to send it to their kids so they can read your blogs, uh, those of you who've been featured, and hopefully leave you a bunch of comments. So this is an amazing thing. Read through the website. See what he's doing because it's a great project. And then this other one. Oh, my goodness. Did you see this? There is a new product. They're making a new plastic that is made out of plant material. It's plant-based. So they cover the outside of the bottle, uh, sometimes with cardboard, and then the inside is lined with this plant-based plastic. And when you finish drinking your drink, you can put it in your compost, or if it ends up in a landfill, it will decompose in a year instead of staying on the earth forever. It decomposes because it's made out of plant stuff. I thought that was awesome. And if you haven't uh, finished like your PSA or other blog post, you should share this with people. The world needs to know that we can switch to a plastic that is natural. It's compostable. You can put it in a compost and it'll become rich soil. And it, it'll be gone in a year instead of last forever. Really awesome. So share that. Had to put that on there. There's my dancing bitmoji. I did that on Snapchat. Love it. This one uh, has some other secret links. If you click around, you'll find stuff. 
Um, but two things I want to share here. One, I think you guys, most of you are way too young for this, um, but I had to share it anyway. Uh, this one, everyone can do. If you're into designing your own games, Legends of Learning, which has awesome games to play that are all educational, has, um, what is it, a competition? Yeah, a design competition. You've got like four or five topics. You pick a game. And I mean, you design a game, and if you win, they will connect you with developers to see if they can make your game actually a real game that people can play. I mean, that's like exciting to me because I love games. So that one, every one of you can do. I think it's from uh, third through 12, or young people can do it too. This next one looked really cool. It's from Google, but the minimum age is 13. So for those of you who are 13, you can be a game changer. And if you're not 13 yet, but you have an older sibling, let them know about it because this one looks really cool. Um, can you make money? No, not for competitions. If you wanna make money, you gotta design a game yourself, uh, find a programmer, start a business. That's the way you make money. And if your game does real well and you sell it for a million or billions of dollars, that's how you get rich. But you gotta have a really good game. And once you put it out on an app store or something, you got to keep up because if people give you bad ratings because you don't fix things they complain about, you're, you're going to go under. Uh, but this type of competition allows you to create a game that's going to get shared with everybody. Sadly, you won't make any money, but you'll establish yourself as a game designer. That will look good for those of you who want to go into game design. Seriously, I would highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, this one, wait till you're 13. They probably have it every year. But this one, check it out. The topics are science topics, which is why I shared it. But they're cool. And, and they tell you everything you need for your game to teach people. All right. So last week, we did that quizzes. I want to do it again. I want to see how uh, uh, good you've gotten since last week. Some of you've been practicing, so you're probably going to do well. So if you can open up a new tab, go to joinmyquiz.com and enter the game code 492673. Thank you for playing. That was kind of fun. Uh, so last week, I asked you to rate the four major final assignments for uh, the big projects we're working on. Remember, this is all part of our Ocean Guardian School. They're all connected. They're all the same science standard, which is how humans impact this planet. Um, and many of you chose this order, and this is a great order. If you haven't done your PSA yet, leave that for later. Focus on climate change and Chimicum Creek right now. Ocean acidification I put in last because it's the toughest one. It's like really uh, uh, advanced science. It's got a lot of chemistry in there uh, and, and some higher level concepts, which is good to learn. So 
if you're doing the climate change, this is it right there. Like I said, 28 of you finished Think Like a Scientist, so you have climate change. In order to get the blog post, you have to finish climate change to get the ace dot. See the ace dot picture there? That's what you want to get to. And looking at the votes, I can see that five of you knew that and two of you are like, I get it now. It's really important that you know that because you don't write your blog post when you're doing climate change. It's just to learn. I want you to learn first, all right? So we got 10 people knew that, two of you get it now. Excellent, I hope the rest of you are getting it. Now, if you're gonna do Creek next, climate change goes to water quality and water quality goes to the final project post. Now, water quality has the most information in there. You're gonna get overwhelmed. I need to work with each one of you separately when you get to that one so you can tell me what you can do and I can guide you because there's a lot. See, when we're in the classroom, you can work as a team to learn dissolved oxygen, flow rate, turbidity, temperature, um, and pH. But now you're alone. You don't have your team. That's five things you gotta learn. I can help you narrow it down to one or two, or if you wanna do all five, I'm there for you. I've got videos, but the videos are long, so you might wanna read for yourself. That might be faster, okay? Um, but there's a lot of stuff and let me help you with that one. Don't think you have to do it on your own. Um, but the final blog post, oh, I can't wait to see those because that's what gets our grant people happy to see that you guys learn some of this stuff. And then PSA since March, can you believe we were working on that when we were in school together? The hydrodynamics challenge uh, and that leads to the PSA so if you still haven't done that you can get her done you got four weeks to go people and they're all tied together they are all tied together and then if you dare go for the big one when you finish your ace dot your climate change blog post you will unlock ocean acidification I think you're gonna love that one but like I said it's advanced it's got some great chemistry. Um, and if you get stuck, please, I can help. I can help. Yeah, you guys on the chat room, be cool. If you have nothing kind to say, don't type, honestly. But this brings us to the end of our science episode for the ninth week of learning from home. So I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to unmute for our final science goodbyes. Da -da 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 -da. Oh dear God. You made it to the end, my people. You are rock stars. I like it when I kind of wish the school whole year wasn't ending so soon. This just seems crazy. You know what I wish? I wish we could have ended it together. And you're the one who thinks that, so. Yeah, well, vaccines take a long time to make, and without a vaccine, I mean, you guys remember how many people kept getting the flu? I don't know about you. I'd rather, I hate the flu, but I would rather get the flu than this COVID stuff. I love breathing. You cannot really breathe when you're not small. Well, and, and I don't know how many of you have, when I was a kid, I had asthma. I know what it's like to not be able to breathe. And it is horrible. And can you imagine if your lungs get full of fluid and then they, can they I be get friends with you? infected? It does sound pretty bad. Yeah. Hey, can I be friends with you? Yeah. I just don't want to get it. Healthy. Let's stay Carver. healthy. Carver. Okay. Same teacher. Same Carver. Teacher. What? The same class. Carver. What's up, Carver? Carver said what? Answer him. What, what's good, Carver? Carver, remember when you were dog fighting in fourth grade? Sure. <laughs> that was random. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs>
<laughs> what prompted that memory? Really gonna miss you guys. Yeah. Well, and uh, when you guys go on to seventh grade, if we do do some face-to-face -face schooling in the fall, I want to say hi. I mean, I will see you around. All right, so people are signing up. I'm going to end the meeting and say bye-bye. Thanks for coming, everybody. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.